All righty. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, I don't think we got any good evenings yet. It's pretty early in the day for that. Or maybe we have some good evenings. No good mornings anymore. I'm not sure how that works. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining our Q1 partner webinar series. Um, we are apologetic for the last minute reschedule, but appreciate you joining and coming back for that. So um, we've got a nice little session here where we're going to go through some information um, with everybody and hopefully kind of have a good dialogue and kind of use this as a jumping off point for you know, future uh, engagements similar to this, or, you know, we could we could work as a team to figure out what the best way is to engage with the partner community moving forward. Um, without further ado, I will get us started here. Um, so did the welcome, a little housekeeping here. This is running on uh, Teams webinar, so your lines are muted and will be muted, um, but please do use the Q&A or the chat feature. We'll be watching that and, and, and interacting with that and, you know, answering any questions through there. Um, this was recorded. This will be sent out to everyone who registered afterwards as well. Um, after this, we'll go through some quick introductions. We'll talk about a acquisition that we made somewhat recently. Um, we'll talk about how the multi-vendor commerce landscape has <laughs> changed. Um, and then talk about some how, re how some retailers and brands are winning together with Logic Broker and how we're helping them win. And then some of the uh, areas of focus our customers are really kind of di doubling down on to win in today's market. And then we'll end with a Q&A session. So again, please feel free to add any questions to the chat. Um, we will answer those um, at the end as we go. Um, and then we will get started here. So those who don't know me, I'm uh, I'm Pat Niersbach. I'm the CMO here at Logic Broker. I'm joined today by Mark Detledge, our president, and Steve Norris, the VP of Digital Commerce. So um, there's been a lot of change recently, uh, maybe somewhat recently, over since the last summer here at Logic Broker, which is exciting. Um, gives us the opportunity to kind of double down on certain areas and, and recommit and refocus to to the growth of the business, um, especially as it relates to the partner community and, and how we're going to drive kind of growth together moving forward. Also, a quick plug, if anybody on the line will be in Las Vegas for Shop Talk, the three of us will also be there um, starting on Sunday for most of us next week. Um, please stop by the booth, 513, um, or message any one of us, and we'd love to kind of, you know, meet face-to-face. -face. So those of you who don't know who Logic Broker is, um, we really are kind of the, the only multi-vendor commerce platform that's seamlessly built to connect retailers and brands to orchestrate um, truly modern, flexible dropship um, and uh, fulfillment programs that really focus on growing revenue. Uh, ultimately, what that means is really helping our customers take control of their commerce programs. They shouldn't have to pick a fulfillment model based on the technology that they're using. They should be able to pivot back and forth um, through a modern technology stack that that we offer um, that is all based on Azure. It's cloud-based. It's multi-tenant. It's, um, it's a pretty powerful platform. And while we haven't got together in a while, um, this kind of some recapping on some of the um, volumes that go through our platform. You know, last year we topped about $8 billion in GMV. Um, we've did business in over 35, helped our customers do business in over 35 countries, um, you know, have 300 plus retail connections, 35 of which are actually native built to the platform, meaning we really truly can help our customers connect to their supplier bases um, any way they see fit. Um, and a couple different ways we do that is really eliminating those integration barriers through flexibility, as we as we talked about, um, allowing them to quickly discover and source new products, right? We all know that in this day and age, you need to move quick and you need to be able to find vendors that can meet your need and fulfill your needs. And so through our platform, we're able to offer that. We offer increased visibility and control. Um, and then we also offer that next level reporting and uh, collaboration with suppliers and, and and merchants for really that consistent customer experience that's needed to really um, fulfill on commerce today. With that said, I think we will move on. Uh, actually, last sorry, one more slide there. Just kind of some of the customers we work with. We we work you know across the globe, across verticals, small business, small medium sized businesses to the enterprise. So you see the likes of you know Samsung, Ace Hardware, Toys R Us. Victoria's Secrets, um, Hasbro, Walgreens, et cetera. So um, really kind of no vertical or company size that's too small, too big, or that we, we can't help with. So if you have a brand or a customer that's looking to uh, expand their revenue or Im implement or upgrade their dropship and marketplace program, we'd be happy to help them with that. So without further ado, Mark, I think I will turn it over to you. Sure. Thanks, Pat. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining. It's um, it's great to be able to uh, to engage with with all the partners. 
Um, I think we've got some technology partners. We've got some SI um, consulting type partners. And um, I think that what we're hoping to do today is show you that there's a role for for everyone, right? And uh, we definitely um, appreciate the the support and uh, and and help that, that that we get from the partners, and also um, some business opportunities for both of us to uh, to grow revenue and drive value for our mutual clients. So, um, you know, one of the first things that we'd like to cover. Um, big change in, in the business. Um, if you hadn't seen, uh, Logic Broker made an acquisition in January uh, that was just announced. Uh, we acquired a marketplace operator called Cortina. And um, I think, you know, Pat, if you'll flip to the next slide, we'll just share a little bit of information here. Um, if you weren't familiar with Cortina, you know, we're very excited to welcome these guys into the, the, the Logic Broker family. Um, the founders of Cortina were actually retail executives at, at places like Saks um, and Gilt.com. And uh, they actually went out and started their own marketplace. And so uh, the technology started as a foundation for them to be their own marketplace. Um, that was called Coedition. Um, and they ran that, you know, very successfully had, you know, 150 or 200 brands participating in, in their marketplace. But they had some people approach them um, to basically, uh, you know, take the software and, and ask them if they could license it for their own marketplace and, and drop ship capabilities. And so the founders decided to uh, make a pivot. And they sold off the customer facing assets um, and uh, really turned into a, a SaaS based uh, marketplace dropship, you know, kind of software um, um, company and and supporting lots of other clients. And as you might imagine, um, I think the clients came to them for the same reasons that maybe many of you um, hear from from your customers. Right. I want to expand my assortment. How do I get new products, new innovations? How do I test new products in, in my markets without carrying all that inventory? Um, I want to scale up my, my programs. How do I do that without maybe hiring a lot more people um, to, to run the processes? And how can I get technology to enable that and, and make me more efficient? Um, and, you know, how can I acquire more customers? How can I find and bring in customers that won't just buy maybe what's in my uh, dropship program, but maybe also my 1P inventory or the things that I'm offering as a, a D2C brand as, as well. So um, they're very deep in the, the fashion, lifestyle, apparel, you know, type of uh, verticals, um, which, you know, really kind of combines well with, uh, with Logic Broker as well. Um, Pat, if you'll flip to the next one, you know, part of um, our excitement about doing this particular acquisition, um, we really do fit well, a, a very shared vision about how to enable and support um, these types of multi-vendor, you know, commerce programs. And it really does bring us an expanded solution. Obviously, there's more marketplaces and um, programs that that we have now within the the, the, the network. And at the same time, another 1,500 or 2,000 um, vendors and suppliers participating in our um, already large um, vendor network. So building that two-sided network of commerce um, has greatly increased with the integration of Logic Broker and Cortina together. Um, there's also um, another addition of um, commerce engines. Pat mentioned the many integrations that we have into things like Shopify and Big Commerce and Magento, et cetera. Um, and with Cortina, there's even a broader um, set of deeper integrations, um, things like WooCommerce and Squarespace and, and others. So um, it really allows us to offer easy to use integrations for very small suppliers to medium businesses all the way up to those large enterprises. Um, we're going to have an, an improved discovery and sourcing um, capability to uh, leverage this large network that, that I mentioned and allow brands to find places to sell and allow merchants to find new brands to add into their assortment portfolios. Um, you're going to see um, additional partner management capabilities and some advanced billing capabilities. And really, whether you're operating a, a dropship or a marketplace, uh, whatever your business model is, um, I think you'll find that that we've got an opportunity to be a best in class platform for for any of those solutions. And lastly, we're super excited about the team, right? Um, Cortina was well known for for white glove support and just like Logic Broker, a lot of capability to help 
um, manage programs, help ensure um, that people are getting people onboarded efficiently and effectively and really generating the, the revenue and sales that they wanted. And finally, a lot more development capacity for our OMD organization. Um, so if you flip to the next one, Pat, you know, I think what what we've recognized certainly from a, a logic broker perspective is that, you know, we need to continuously invest um, in both organic development and, and investing time and energy and money um, into the things that we hear from our clients that they need, but also this opportunistic M&A um, when there's um, when there's an opportunity to do that. And part of the the change that we see occurring that's really driving some of this is that a bit of um, the the merging together of some of these models. You know, traditionally, a client had to pick like, do I want to do one p inventory direct sales? Do I want to do drop ship? Do I want to do marketplace, et cetera? And they're kind of locked into a set of software or a platform that met those needs. But what we've been finding is that many clients today are looking for a blend or a combination of some of these capabilities, right? For example, maybe they do want a business model where they're just taking commissions off of the sales that are occurring on their marketplace, but they still want some control over who those vendors are and how those vendors are presenting their products, um, creating a good customer experience for that, that end shopper. Um, maybe they want to allow a seller to do some direct fulfillment um, to the end customer, but allow returns to come through a brick and mortar store that they have. So, I think what we're finding is that for all of the characteristics of these business models, you ultimately want the choice to sort of pick and choose the best combination of these models for how you think you want to create an experience for, for your shoppers. And ultimately what Logic Broker is doing is building the most flexible solution here to enable any and all of these combinations. And in fact, even have multiple business models, you know, operating at, at the same time, if that's, you know, kind of what the, uh, the client needs. Um, Pat, if you flip to the next one, um, you know, I think that um, if if some of you haven't um, seen the uh, the McFadden Sweet Spot report that, uh, that that came out earlier in the year, I'm very pleased that that Logic Broker is again featured and highlighted um, in that um, assessment of marketplace and uh, providers. Um, as you can see, I think this breadth and depth of capability that um, that I was talking about um, certainly being noted, you know, by uh, by the third party evaluation. Um, also, just to note, as part of this report, um, Cortina was also mentioned independently as one of the marketplace platforms to watch. And so, again, we're, we're very excited that we've been able to integrate their capabilities with, uh, with logic brokers. Um, having, you know, um, a very rich and, and scalable platform is certainly critical today, right? If you think about um, all of the various retailers trying to stay competitive with the industry where heavyweights like not just Amazon, but even Target Plus or Walmart's Marketplace and, and others are rapidly expanding. They're rapidly adding products to their assortment. Um, they're getting a lot more um, GMV running through their platforms. And so I think that you'll we find that many, many um, clients of all sizes out there are saying this is a business model that I can really use to generate um, some revenue, and I need to have um, some capabilities in my platform that can allow me to grow and scale a platform to uh, to compete and keep my shoppers happy, keep them shopping on on my site. Um, but um, Pat, if you flip to the next one, you know, having an, a large assortment is is not enough, right? I mean, I think that it might attract a shopper to to come to the page. But you need a good experience to actually get that shopper to convert, to put products in their basket, and ultimately to um, have a good post-purchase experience that makes them want to actually return and be a repeat shopper and, and a loyal shopper. And so we spend a lot of time within Logic Broker um, looking at areas like data quality and the quality of product information. Is it accurate? Is it describing products um, well enough? Is it providing um, sort of the information and imagery that um, people would expect to help them make an educated buying decision? Are we accurate in terms of shipping and delivery and information that helps the shopper understand really when they can expect to receive a, a given product? Is there an efficiency and ease of executing the transaction? 
transaction and sending that all the way back through the the sellers um, to make sure that it's easy for them to then you know fulfill and and deliver against that that experience. So there's a lot of factors that we think are critical in in building a successful multi vendor commerce platform, and you really um, can't afford to get it wrong. Right, the stakes are high. Um, it's very expensive um, to acquire customers. And so if they come once and have a bad experience and you lose them, you're obviously, you know, in uh, a negative situation and trying to spend additional funds to go acquire um, new customers. Um, you're not going to get multiple chances, right? Shoppers are very fickle. They have lots of alternatives, lots of places to go. And really, I think these bad experiences can directly impact the bottom line. And so what we'd like to do in the remaining time today is maybe share with you a couple of the ways in which Logic Broker is, is handling these situations and providing capabilities and features um, for our clients, things that you can use um, with your clients to, uh, to address some of these issues. So Steve, I think I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mark. I think, you know, to help kind of set the stage here, there's you know, Mark did a nice job of recapping just how expensive it is to acquire a customer right now. Like if you think about the cost of customer acquisition, whether you're a brand or a retailer, that's increased by over five, you know, has nearly doubled over the last five years, right? So how can we join together as a Logic Broker partner community and Logic Broker to be able to support these retailers and brands as they start to think about how do they battle these high costs of customer acquisitions, right? And some of the challenges that they have. You know, when we're working with and we're talking with retailers today, I think we probably have all jointly come to the same conclusion, right? That organizations are starting to think past marketing dollars to get eyes on site and thinking about new creative ways that they can be able to capture more customers or capture more of their customers' wallet. Right. And what we see is a lot of people taking control of their own destiny here from a from a retailer perspective. They're thinking about, can I attract more customers and gain a larger amount of wallet share and build bigger baskets by curating the perfect aisle or the best aisle for their customer while allowing their suppliers to participate more meaningfully in the transaction? Right. We're seeing a lot of organizations think about, think about I can build a bigger basket size by offering a broader assortment, but not an assortment that is fully open. What we see is a much more curated assortment being successful for the retailers that we work with. Uh, you know, we don't see as being successful scenarios where like Macy's is selling a bag of potato chips, right? that you could go on their website today, you could buy a nice case of Lay's potato chips. We don't think that model particularly works because it's not what their customers are coming for to begin with, right? And we anticipate in a lot of those scenarios that, and you know, a lot of those retailers are saying, hey, the assortment is very big, but the sales on that assortment is fairly limited. But by adding this new curated assortment, it's also giving retailers access to a broader set of first party data. We live in, and if you're an SI on this call, you're constantly battling with your customers on how to provide an experience to a customer that's unique and differentiated, right? And if you don't have that first party data because somebody's going to your site and they're saying, oh, this looks nice and then buying it somewhere else, that ability to be able to do personalization at scale and that ability to be able to make informed decisions around assortment just simply doesn't happen. And I think what's interesting, Pat, and if you want to go to the next slide, we've seen a lot of momentum, and I would anticipate some of our OMS partners on this call have heard some of the same things, is these brands are really kind of focused and struggling with trying to figure out new and unique ways that they can show up every year with year-over-year -year growth, both in revenue and in customer lifetime value, while also saying, hey, I need to protect my brand image. If I'm a consumer electronics company and one of the biggest companies in the world, I'm very concerned about my customer's experience and how they perceive me if I'm going to sell a couple other products that aren't from me. What we're finding is the battle for brands is twofold. 
and growing that year over year revenue, it's not necessarily just on their site. It's finding places where they can attract a broader and differentiated audience, right? So we're seeing a lot of momentum in businesses that are saying, hey, we want to be able to now take and sell maybe internationally on Lazada or Shopee or some of these international marketplaces. We're seeing folks still continue to invest in selling in some of these social shopping platforms. But we're also seeing those same brands that may have sold on marketplaces for years become a marketplace or a dropship platform themselves to be able to sell complementary products. If you think about some of the customers maybe that you work with as a partner, some of them sell products that have long replacement cycles, right? Things like appliances, barbecue grills, or things in patio furniture, or things that feel like they last forever, right? But if you're just selling those things, how do you keep the customer interested? How do you keep in front of them? And how do you increase the customer lifetime value? They're not going to come back for 8 to 12 years to buy another product. It feels like a no-brainer, but a lot of these brands now are just now exploring, hey, if I'm selling something like a monitor, why can't I sell the keyboard and the mouse and the webcam without investing in manufacturing and innovation cycles, right? If I'm selling appliances, can I sell Tide Pods and a coffee subscription and other things to go along with it? And as brands are, and what we're really seeing and what we're talking about here is there's this evolution where brands are kind of evolving into retailers to some extent, and retailers are evolving into brands. And But what helps them with that is really Logic Broker, right? We're the most flexible multi-vendor commerce platform and the only platform that allows retailers and distributors and brands to operate a dropship program, a curated marketplace program, and automate their wholesale procurement all through a single platform, while additionally allowing them to participate by selling through other dropship programs and marketplaces. We think really, and Pat, if you want to go to the next slide, we really we really feel like the future multi-vendor -com commerce is bright, right? And we're heading quickly in a world where what got you here isn't what's going to get you there, right? You need the capabilities to be able to offer a curated assortment in which any seller can participate, regardless of their size or the commercial value or the technical capabilities. You need to be able to find easily find products and suppliers, whether they're in a network or they sit outside of a network. There's a need, and especially if you're in the OMS community and you're on the call, you know probably better than us, right? You need complete transparency from the time your customer checks out to the time that product ends up on the doorstep, whether it's coming from your fulfillment center or a store or from a dropship supplier or marketplace seller. And you need that deeper reporting and collaboration tools to deliver consistently on customer experiences. But this isn't all just technology, right? You need the people in the process to be able to help your customers scale, right? Because if we just give them tools, they can only be so successful. But with expertise and managed services, they can really take their they can really take their multi-vendor commerce programs to the next level. And I wanted to double click a little more in some of these key areas where we believe Logic Broker is truly differentiated and can really help your clients and prospects be successful. When you think about like, what's the biggest barrier to success? If you're working with one of your customers that's starting a marketplace or growing a dropship program or automating wholesale procurement, it's flat out that the suppliers and sellers that participate in these programs have a wide variety of technical sophistication. There may be folks that, there may be folks like Procter & Gamble or Colgate Palmolive that want to participate, but they, or industrial suppliers like Alcoa and Worth that prefer to be connected to via EDI or CXML because they all their legacy platforms already speak that language and are already integrated that way. There may be suppliers that just simply have low level of technical sophistication, or maybe they just simply want to start more of a manual process until they prove out that the program can, that a drop selling on a dropship program or marketplace can be successful. And they can use the Logic Broker portal to be able to upload their products, update inventory availability, do fulfillment of orders, invoice, process returns, 
and a myriad of other different things. There are folks within that subset that would rather work within their internal systems, right? These oftentimes may be smaller digitally native brands that really want to work holistically from within their Shopify instance, or they already have ShipStation they're doing fulfillment out of that. Or maybe they want to be able to just integrate a CSV with their, do a CSV integration with their QuickBooks environment. These are all things that Logic Broker supports in our industry leading number of connectivity methods for suppliers, which allows the programs that you guys support when you're supporting marketplace operators or dropship operators to be able to say yes to any supplier, regardless of their technical sophistication. Because a marketplace or dropship program is only as good as the assortment of suppliers that are a part of it. We've removed the friction in the onboarding process over the last two years by allowing retailers or brands to invite new suppliers directly to their program within the Logic Broker platform so that they can have full transparency to that onboarding process and the testing process in real time. This promotes accountability across the program for both the suppliers and logic broker. And our no supplier fee approach has really removed the friction in having the supply with the suppliers having to do a cost benefit analysis to figure out if they even want to participate. After they invite the suppliers to the platform, our white glove onboarding service jumps in and they shepherd those suppliers through that testing cycle, answering any technical or operational questions that that supplier may have about the program they're participating in, both during the onboarding and then the run rate business. This oftentimes alleviates the need for your clients to have to staff like a marketplace operator or supplier help desk, which is often required in some of the more first generation platforms. This is allowing the organizations you work with to be able to continue to scale these programs without having to make a deep investment and in continual labor to grow the program. And one of the folks that we've really helped out with this is, is Barbecue Guys. Barbecue Guys, you know, Barbecue Guys came to Logic Broker as a business that was roughly at about $30 million in revenue. They're over $300 million in revenue today because of the capabilities that we provide to be able to onboard suppliers in a myriad of different manners. And we've gotten their onboarding time down to being able to onboard a new supplier into their program within 52 minutes. That program has gone from 50 suppliers to over 600 suppliers, and they make full use of all the integration options that you've seen earlier. It was interesting because we just had a conversation with our customer advisory board yesterday, and this particular item came up. One of the challenges a lot of organizations that you work with have is, in half the battle, is finding, how do I find the assortment that I want to be able to sell? How do I find the suppliers of that assortment? And how do I quickly and easily get them on board like we talked about before? So what we've done, and Mark talked a little bit earlier, is really around supplier discovery. So Logic Broker is allowing the retailer, the marketplace operator, to quickly and easily discover new suppliers and new SKUs that they can add to their assortment. And they're, uh, we're allowing the suppliers to be able to seamlessly and easily upload that product content directly to Logic Broker in whatever format that they already have that content in, and then match it to the retailer, the operator, the brand's taxonomy, so that it populates their e-commerce system and some of their downstream systems, and those systems that are forward-facing to their customer. We're allowing the operator to be able to collaborate directly with the suppliers from within the platform, to be able to go back and forth on things like price setting, to be able to ask questions about particular pieces of product content, and be able to have prescribed workflows and set workflows from within our platform that allow brands and retailers to easily be able to review and approve and send a product from inception all the way to their e-commerce front end site and into their customer facing systems, allowing them to be able to refine the content and make sure it matches their brand image, matches their brand promise and is the curated assortment that they need 
to be able to provide that best aisle for their customer versus an endless aisle of products that may have little to no sales history. This has enabled logic broker retailers today to be able to onboard new product catalogs from their suppliers in roughly around five minutes, in some cases a little bit less, with all the confidence that they need that the data is correct before they launch it. One of the areas that we've seen great success there was with Logic Broker customer, Cortina customer, Monica and Andy, who's taken advantage of our discovery capabilities in order to be able to identify new and unique suppliers of children's clothes and children's toys to be able to quickly and easily expand their assortment identifying over 20 suppliers from within our platform that they could immediately connect with and start selling the, that assortment. For our OMS friends that are on the line, you guys are used to this idea of having complete transparency from checkout to delivery, right? That's part of what an order management system is doing. But oftentimes what we find is in a lot of these drop shipping platforms, you don't get that same visibility that you would get if you ship the product yourself if somebody else is shipping it. So what we've done from within the platform is we allow suppliers as well as the retailers and operators and brands to have full visibility across not just the entire product content lifecycle, but the order fulfillment lifecycle as well from within that single platform. This allows the retailer to see everything in real time across the program. It allows them to be able to receive proactive alerting around things like non-compliance. It allows them to be able to message back and forth with suppliers to handle questions or discrepancies or things that are happening saying, you might go into the platform and say, hey, this particular order is late. Can you give me an update on it? And we're leveling up the suppliers that participate as a part of these, com these communities and these programs by giving them the capabilities to not just generate and process orders and shipment detail and invoices, but giving them the ability to be able to print those and generate those business documents that are important to their success. So these are things like packing slips. These are things like picking, pack, picking lists. These are things like shipping labels and other important documents that are important to the operations of their business. Because if you think about it, a lot of these smaller suppliers that may use a portal don't necessarily have the internal systems like a warehouse management system to be able to handle the generation of some of these documents. We're allowing them to generate those and execute on those tasks directly from within our platform. One of the areas that we've seen a lot of success in is with our customer HD supply. They're a division of, they're the B2B division at Home Depot. And where this has been particular help for HD supply is when they came to us, they had a major business challenge. They had two and a half to three employees that worked in their warehouse every day. That sole job was to show up, look at a bunch of products that weren't labeled when they came in, or had incorrect shipping details and incorrect ASNs. And they would go in and they would manually fix that, manually receive that those products into their warehouse every single day. By implementing Logic Broker and our business rule validation and our non-compliant or in our compliance rules to enforce not enforce compliance across the program, all those suppliers now are receiving errors immediately when they send bad, missing, or incomplete ASN data. And those suppliers are able to now resolve those issues within Logic Broker before they become an issue at HD supply. Those two and a half employees or three employees that were repurposed had been repurposed from data entry into outbound shipping. And if you've paid attention to the news in the last year, one of the things that HD Supply did is they opened a distribution center in Denver that's fully automated. So robots are now bringing products into inventory and they're putting it away. Um, that's the future, right? The future of these robots is kind of scary, but. Being able to use them to execute on warehouse tasks makes all the sense in the world. But the only way you can do that is if you have almost perfect quality data every single time. And that's what Logic Broker is helping HD supply with. You also need the ability to be able to monitor the performance of these programs and the performance of the suppliers and the performance of the products that are a part of it. Because that's paramount when you're making de doing decision making, right? A lot of folks are trying to figure out, how do I select suppliers, right? 
How do I understand whether a supplier needs to be replaced or not? How do I understand whether I need secondary or tertiary sources of inventory? How can I look at particular products to inform my merchandising strategy and the performance of them? Do I need to double down in a category? Do I need to build resilience in a category? Do I need to maybe leave a category and find a new one, right? And how do I ensure the customer has the same dang experience every single time, whether they're buying my product or whether buying somebody else's product is gonna ship to them? We're giving full transparency across the platform by providing real-time analytics and scorecarding directly from within our platform. We have over 100 KPIs around product performance, commonly returned products by reason, products commonly canceled, vendor on time and in full performance, and, and many others. These are accessible directly within our platform. But if you're an SI on the call, just as good, this information is available to you to take and integrate into other internal systems that may be used by your clients for reporting and more full-scale BI performance. So if you're working with a client that has their own Power BI instance, or they're using Tableau, or they want to take this into Snowflake because they're going to do some next-generation manipulation and data reporting on it, those are things that are available to you as an SI to be able to help them integrate as a part of the overall platform, while also giving the ability for them to be able to manage the platform holistically with Inside Logic Broker. They don't have that strategy. One of the areas where we've seen a great amount, a great performance in this area around visibility has really been with our clients, Walgreens. They use our real-time analytics to keep a pulse on the success of their dropship program. They can immediately go in our platform and diagnose things like lost, diagnose things like why have I lost sales and do root cause analysis across multiple different products to understand is it a certain product that continues to get returned? Is it a certain supplier that continues to not ship on time? Is it a combination of supplier and product? Is it a combination of supplier and product and region, right? They're using this information to inform some of their merchandising decisions as well as marketing decisions as they start to understand and get better granularity as to where are these products being purchased. But we don't leave our customers alone, right? And maybe that's a bad way of putting it. It sounds like we're pestering them, huh? If we just gave them the technology and we said good luck, right? They could only be so successful. And they'd have to continue to ramp up staffing in order to be able to support growth from within a program. So what we've done is taken a people plus technology approach where we have best in class technology our hyperscaling design enables high availability and high performance across millions of API calls a year, supporting $8 billion in GMV. And our SSO capabilities and our encryption at data in transit and rest allows us to be able to make sure the data is secure as it's moving across our platform. And because we're a part of that hyperscaling cloud, that means that we have an infinite nines uptime because we have full scale failover inside the hyperscaling cloud to be able to move to a different region should there be an outage in a particular area. We've heard a lot from a lot of organizations in the last six months that have been that have evaluated solutions or are currently on kind of a legacy multi-vendor commerce platform that has had a significant number of outages. As Mark had mentioned earlier, Pat mentioned earlier, we're supporting commerce in over 35 different co countries. And we're fully compliant with the California Consumer Protection Act and GDPR compliance across the platform, while also allowing things like PII to be redacted on a scheduled basis. That product plus people approach, you'll see there in the bottom left-hand side, some of the people that our customers work with every day. And we're really proud of those people. They do a great job, right? You probably won't find a software company that says, hey, our customer service is bad. But... From our, from our perspective, we have best in class support. We call it really our white glove onboarding. And this is our dedicated onboarding teams and our assigned customer success managers that really aren't just doing technical support, but are also focused on how to help our customers grow the programs that they're launching or participating in. By collaborating on things like understanding areas of category expansion, understanding things like reviewing white space of assortment. Our customer success team is doing a lot with suggesting suppliers. Many organizations will come to us and say, hey, I wanna open up a new category and 
in pets, for instance. Who can you help connect me to that's already a part of your network that is selling in pets? Can you tell me a little bit more about their performance and some of the other programs? That network of suppliers is over 9,000 suppliers today and continuing to grow every day. And one of those organizations that has really loved some of the capabilities that we have from a managed service perspective is Full Beauty Brands. Full Beauty Brands is over a billion dollars in revenue. One of the larger women's apparel retailers here in the U.S. and one, quite frankly, that I never heard of until I worked here. But we helped transition them from a legacy dropship platform over to Logic Broker and expanded their capabilities because they had something to say. They said, hey, we love drop shipping. Drop shipping has a very good space for our business, but we need to be able to complement that with a marketplace because we want to be able to sell products outside of our core assortment that we don't know a whole lot about. And we want those sellers to be able to list those products themselves and set the price. That way we don't have to understand, like as full beauty brands, they don't have to understand, they can understand everything they want about women's clothing and apparel. They don't have to be experts in areas like jewelry. There's also a component of having a marketplace that they like because it helped them attract new sellers and suppliers to their program. Because some of them were digitally native brands that were used to selling on Amazon, were used to selling on the Walmart marketplace, right? We're used to maybe selling on eBay or on Etsy or some of these other sites, right? This allowed them to attract new sellers and suppliers to their community that gives them a really unique assortment for their customers because they understand Fundamentally, that having a core assortment is important and strategic to the business, but what can attract new shoppers is a new and unique assortment that nobody else is selling. You could go out to onestopplus.com one today and see them operating that customer-facing marketplace, as well as seeing those products that are part of that marketplace across all of the full beauty brands. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Mark, that was some really good stuff. So kind of just to wrap up here for kind of next steps, we're going to continue to uh, evaluate these quarterly webinars. Um, again, this is the first one we've we've done in maybe ever or at least a while. So want to kind of level set with what's been going on and where we're at and kind of we'll look to, uh, you know, work with the partner community as we actively backfill um, our, our partnership role and kind of what makes the most sense from a topic perspective. Um, we're open to evaluating co-marketing opportunities. That's everything from events, reports, webinars, campaigns. You know, I think we've, we've all got a lot of kind of uh, ability to work together and make help our customers win. So, um, you know, I think open to open to that from from my side, especially um, I talked about events a little bit. But again, co-sponsoring, you know, in-person events, whether it's around shop talk or trade shows or virtual events or whatever it may be. I think we're really open to that as well. And then, you know, we, we understand that. Um, as the partner community grows, we need to arm your teams with enablement materials. So we're really looking to revamp the materials we have available to for everyone to use to really kind of understand and educate their sellers on when Logic Broker is an appropriate um, solution to bring to the market and kind of the differenti differences between us and some of the competitors in the space. Um, so with that, I think we're going to wrap, give everybody about, you know, 15 minutes back. Um, appreciate you guys joining. Um, and like I said, this will be record, the recording will be sent out, but appreciate the time, everyone. Mark, Steve, thanks. Thanks for your insights. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.